to the Lord. Let's worship Him. Wherever you are watching from, continue to worship the Lord. Thank you, worship team. And, uh, you know, even though you may be just in, in your home, in the kitchen, whatever, just continue to just praise God and worship Him. Thank the Lord for this time that we can worship together. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, hello, champions. Uh, welcome again to another day uh, to be with us today. And uh, if this is your first time, please let us know where you are watching from, as the, as the presider a while ago already mentioned. And please fill out a Connect card so we can acknowledge you as our guest. Or just simply chat uh, below and our team will connect with you. By the way, we just heard, uh, just got word that... Um, we in uh, Brampton, here in the Peel region, will be able to already have 15% capacity this coming Sunday. So if you are the, one of those people who are really excited to be able to come and worship with others and be in the house of God, well, I encourage you, make sure you fill up uh, a, uh, the event bright and get, it, get yourself registered because once that's filled up to the capacity, you won't be able to join, all right? So make sure if you were one of those who want to join us, make sure you already, uh, the, the event bright will be coming up uh, during this week and you can fill it up, okay? And by the way, you can also share this live stream for those of you that are online, share it and uh, on your Facebook page or wherever you're watching this from and start a watch party so you could watch with your friends. If you are being blessed by the messages that you hear uh, from Champion Life, uh, please make sure to like the page and also uh, let others know about it so that you won't miss any posts from us. Now, uh, let us go before the Lord right now. Let's ask, ask God to uh, minister to us today. So let's bow our heads in prayer and ask God to uh, speak to us today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today and we thank you for this opportunity that we can hear your word and so, Lord, we open our hearts and minds to you, and we pray, God, speak into our life. Let your word come forth. Let it be rooted in our hearts that we can uh, apply it every day in our life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, as we get closer to Easter, uh, it's important for us to remember what Jesus Christ has done for us. Uh, we are starting a new series called Jesus is Enough. And for the next few weeks, we will look at who Jesus is and the importance of a relationship with Him. Today, our message is Jesus is the bread of life. So please get your Bibles and uh, turn on your Bibles. And uh, we're going to be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 32 to 40. It says this, Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Just, but, but as I told you, ha, you have seen me and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life, and I will raise Him up at the last day. Well, God bless His Word. Now, let me give you a little bit of a background. Jesus had just finished feeding the 5,000 men miraculously with five loaves and two fish. Um, you know, five loaves of bread and, and the two fish. Now, he left that place and went into Capernaum, and he walked on water on the Sea of Galilee. Now, the people followed him, and Jesus told them uh, that they were looking for him, not because they have seen the, mirac the, the miraculous signs, but 
because they were filled with the bread. And at this point, they still didn't believe that Jesus uh, was the Son of God. And they were searching for the wrong reason. And Jesus told them that they should not work for food that spoils, uh, but, uh, th but uh, also for, for uh, eternal life, food that gives eternal life. That's what they should be uh, working for. And this led them to another set of questions. They asked, what works must we do that God requires? What miracles will you perform so that we can believe you? Well, they went on to say that their forefathers ate manna, which is bread, from heaven. So what will you do, Jesus? You know, tell us, what are you going to do? If you're, if you're from heaven, then what will you do? Well, our passage this morning is Jesus' response to the question that they had in mind. He told them that the manna, of bread that they ate was not from Moses, it was from God. But the true bread from heaven was not that. It's the one that gives life to the world. So they wanted this bread, but they still didn't understand that Jesus was talking about himself. And Jesus used the metaphor of bread to describe himself. So let's talk about the significance of the bread in his day now bread was an important part of the meal you know in our culture when we go to a restaurant we generally focus on the main meal the entree and the the bread that is brought to the table is secondary in fact it's probably like a filler you know while you're waiting for your meal uh you get the bread and some restaurants even give you you know, unlimited. You can keep eating until your, your uh, main meal comes, right? But in Jesus' day, bread represented the major part of the meal for the majority of the Israelites, usually dipped in olive oil or in wine. And the Hebrew word for bread, lehem, was also used to refer to food in general. And so to eat a meal or to eat food is to eat bread that's what it meant so when jesus says that he is the bread of life he is saying that he is the most important part of life you can't do without it now everyone had access to bread meat was enjoyed only by the privileged rich uh, poorer people used barley to make bread and while the wealthier uh, used wheat, but most everyone had the means to make or buy bread. Now, by using this metaphor, Jesus is saying that he is available to everyone. So you can, you can call on him and he's available for you. Uh, there is no difference whether you're rich, old, or uh, rich or poor, or young or old. He's available to you. Now, bread was the means also of fellowship. In that culture, when you broke bread with someone, um, you're friends for life. And that's what Jesus uh, gives us. And that is uh, a friend for life, that we are God's friend. And that's basically what we do in communion. When we break bread together as a family of God, like we covenant with the Lord that He is our Redeemer and that of what He has done for us. And that's the fellowship that we have with Him. The other thing about bread is that bread symbolizes God's presence. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Now, meaning Beth is house and Lehem is bread. So the house of bread. And the temple was continually filled with the showbread, it's called, in Numbers. And this can be interpreted as show up bread or uh, in Hebrew terms, face bread. So this bread was heavenly symbol of God himself and a reminder to his people that every time they eat bread, they should think of him, of God's presence. And so bread also is regarded as a gift of God. All life was seen to be dependent upon the grain harvest. And this in turn depended upon the rain uh, in its season. And so bread, the product uh, at the bottom of the divine processes, 
was regarded as a gift of God. It's a daily reminder of His continual and often undeserved care. Now, there was a man who bought bread at the store and um, he really liked the bread and he wanted to thank the, the owner of the store. So as he thanked the owner of the store, the, the store owner said, don't thank me. He said, thank the, the baker because he's the one who baked it and just we're just selling it, but he's the one who baked it. So thank the baker. So he went and uh, as he went to the baker, he thanked the baker and the baker said, don't thank me. I just thank this. Uh, I just bake it. But, you know, thank the farmer because they're the one who have the grain. And, you know, without them, we would have nothing to bake. So, so the man went to the farmer and he goes to the farmer and says, thank you for this wonderful bread. You know, so, uh, so the, the farmer says, well, don't thank me. He says, you know, I only plant the seed. And, you know, it goes down on the ground. But then he says, only God will make it grow and have a harvest. And he's the one who brings rain. So thank God. <laughs> Amen. So, friend, uh, bread is a gift of God. And so, friend, I, I want you to know that when Jesus says he is the bread, he is saying he is the gift of God. Also, bread is generally called food, right? Accordingly to, uh, in the Old Testament, from Genesis chapter 3, verse 19 onward, stands for food in general. When you say uh, bread, it stands for food. Now, Jesus taught his disciples to pray, give us this day our daily bread. It meant give us food for every day. So when Jesus talked about the fact that he is the bread of life. He was referring to being the source of life. Apart from him, you would starve to death. In fact, Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. So he says, this is not ordinary bread that they ate in the wilderness. God gives this true bread. And without revelation, immediately these people said, from now on, give us this bread. But they still didn't get it. They still didn't understand. You know, Jesus explained further that the true bread from heaven is the Son of God who came down and gave life to the world. You can't find this anywhere. Jesus is the bread of life. So why don't you just declare that? Jesus is the bread of life. Right? They were face to face with the living bread that can give them life. And still, they didn't believe. And Jesus made some proclamations. And so in, in just a few moments, we're going to be talking about some proclamations that Jesus gave as he talked to these disciples and, he, and these people that were around him. And he gave these uh, proclamations as the bread of life. So the first proclamation is about provision. Provision. He said in verse 35, you will not go hungry and thirsty. Jesus said, whoever comes to him will not grow hungry. And he who believes in him will not go thirsty. Those are the two most uh, important and basic needs of life. Food and water. They're necessary for survival. Now, there are many things that our bodies can do without. It can do without makeup. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> it can do without hair. Some people go walk around with no hair. You can have no teeth. <laughs> it's okay. You can still live. You can even lose an eye or feet and still live a fruitful life. But you can't do without food and water for a long time. You will die. Now, just as your body needs food and water to survive, our soul also longs for fulfillment. And Jesus addresses the very core of our being. Uh, imagine a life that you never grow hungry or you never grow thirsty. Imagine that. How long you could just live, you never grow hungry, never grow thirsty. I, I wonder what you could do if you never felt hunger and thirst. See, Jesus 
proclaim that He can provide our deepest desire. He provides satisfaction to our soul that we no longer have a need. There is something that is inherent in every human being that continues to search for fulfillment. We want more all the time. We want more money. We want more toys, more things. We are never satisfied. Come on, just think about that. You know, when you have a TV, you want the latest model TV. Now you want 4K, maybe 8K now because 8K comes out. You know, and so you want the latest cell phone. We always want something more. We're never satisfied with what we have. And Jesus said, I am the one who can satisfy you. When I am in your life, you will not want anymore. All right? So you will not be hungry. You will not be thirsty. I am your all in all. And in Him, you can have your being. And you can move because of Jesus in our life. In John chapter 6, verse 48 to 51, he goes on and he says this, I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Now, Jesus gives this powerful proclamation that his body is that bread that will give us life. Now, he was talking about his death on the cross that will forgive our sins and ultimately give us eternal life. So he's talking about him being sacrificed for us. And so these people were not understanding all of this. Right? And, and, and yet Jesus was telling them that he is the one that could give life for them. So it's not something that you need, it's someone. So people are looking for that thing, that manna, that bread, and Jesus is saying, you don't need that, you need me in your life. And so friends, you and I uh, need to remember that it's not the things that will satisfy us. You can have all the things in the world. You can have possessions in the world, but you will always live empty without Him. You know that Augustine, a theologian, uh, rightly observed that every single person has a God-shaped vacuum in his soul. It's about, uh, Augustine says this, Augustine's sense of self is his relation to God both in his recognition of God's love and his response to it. Achieved through self-presentation, then self-realization, Augustine believed one could not achieve inner peace without finding God's love. Friends, we can attempt to fill that void with a host of other things, but finally, nothing quenches our thirst for our redemption and our hunger for significance except Jesus and his gospel. You know, Jesus says that, you know, our life is not about the abundance of possessions. Uh, you know, you could have everything and still have no life. Life is only found in him. You're all familiar with the old saying, money can buy you a house, but not a home. Money can buy you an education, but not wisdom. Money can buy you a bed, but not restful sleep. Money can buy you influence, but not respect. It can buy you medicine, but not health. A spouse, but not love. Quiet, but not peace. Friends, despite the failure of money, power, pleasure, drink, or drugs, or the host of other glittering distractions that the promised peace and fulfillment but cannot deliver, we still scramble to find our meaning in everything except our maker and his destiny and purpose for us. And David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. 
He leads me beside still waters. May we be able to say that about our life, that without Christ we are nothing, but with Him, He gives us life, He gives us peace, He, he provides everything that we need and, and satisfies our soul. Jesus Christ provides, always provides, what we need and not always what we want. You know, sometimes we think that God will just give you everything we want, but He gives us what we need. And sometimes what we need is different from what we want. Sometimes what we need is a little adversity. <laughs> sometimes it will be lack or loss or disappointment that will cause us to be grateful for what we've been given or to better rely upon Him from whom it all came. And so sometimes, you know, when people come to me and they say, you know, Pastor, can you pray for me when they're being, you know, so busy with all the other things in life? Sometimes I think, what is it that, you know, could really make you come closer to God? If you want to be closer to God, maybe God needs to remove those things in your life so that you can be close to God. So sometimes what we need are those things that will cause us to draw close to Him. See, God knows me better than I know me. He knows what will move me along in my journey toward Christ-likeness. And it's the same with you. So today, I want you to declare with me, Jesus is my provider. He is my provider. Amen. Yes, yes, go ahead, chat it. Uh, you know, declare it that He is your provider. And now, the other thing is this. The other proclamation that Jesus gave is protection. In verse 37 and 38, he said he will not drive them away, will not lose them. And Jesus proclaimed that he will protect those who come to him. He does not turn anyone away. No matter how bad you've been, no matter how wrong you have been, he is still there for you. Nothing could stop him from loving you. He will protect you from the evil one. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 27 to 28, it says this, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. See, this is not a promise for those who do not follow him. We can just declare these things and think that, oh, Jesus will just, you know, give this promise and protect me. No, he can only protect those who come to him and follow him. They obey him. And so Paul says in Romans 8, 38 to 39, he said, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, the love of God through Jesus Christ protects us. Paul says there is nothing in this world that can separate us from God. You know, no matter what you're going through, whatever difficulty or challenges that you may face, when you run to God, He will always have open arms for us. Now, you may be thinking, well, Pastor, you don't know my life. You know, I have done some terrible things, and, you know, I don't know if I could ever come to the Lord. I don't know if He will accept me. I want you to know today that Jesus declared that, he, that, that, he, that no one who comes to Him uh, will be turned away, that you can go to Him and, and, and you don't have to go anywhere else. You don't have to, to wonder if the Lord loves you. He loves you. He died for you. And therefore, you can run to Him. That's why I say to people, you know, when you're going through difficulties and you're going to challenges and you have problems in life, that's not the time to run away from God. <laughs> that, that's the time to run to God. That's the time to run to Jesus. So I'm, I'm calling upon you. If you... 
if you are going through something, maybe a marriage problem or a, a financial problem, work problem or relationship problem, whatever you are going through, this is not the time to run away from God. This is the time to run to Jesus. He will not turn you away. You go to Him and He will love you and you can, and, and you can have a, a relationship with the Lord where He can provide for your deepest need. And so the third proclamation that uh, Jesus uh, gave is this. He said in verse 40, he said he will raise them up on the last day. So he has a promise. That's the promise that he gave, that he will raise them up on the last day. I want you to know today that Jesus proclaims a promise that anyone, right, anyone who believes in him shall have eternal life life he was talking about the resurrection of the disciples when we who believe in him and follow him will be with him forever you know in john chapter 14 jesus told his disciples i'm going to prepare a place for you he said you know in my father's house are many mansions and 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 i'm gonna uh, uh come back for you you know where i go uh, he said, you know, I'm, I'm, go I'm coming back again so that where I am, you will be also. So the Lord uh, is reminding us today that he wants us to be with him, that there is a promise that one day he's going to come again for us and we will be with him forever. When we who believe in him and follow him will be with him forever. For friends, you know, that's what, he was, uh, that's what uh, the blessed hope that we have. That we can believe in the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the Apostle Paul said it this way in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. He said this, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call, of God and the dead in Christ will rise first after that we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we will be with the Lord forever hallelujah friends that is our blessed hope now I don't know when that will be but I'm looking forward to his coming when we will be joined together with him. That is called the rapture of the church. And so Jesus is, is, is reminding us of this promise that he is coming again. And so that's why we need to live our lives ready for him. We need to live our lives pleasing him because we know that he's coming again. You know, it's sad that there are many uh, Christians today who live their lives as if Jesus is never coming back. You know, they know it from the Word of God, but they live their lives as if the Lord will never come back. Maybe they've grown weary. I don't know. But the, the reality is many people today are just living their way, you know, going away from the Lord, doing whatever things. They're not obeying Him. They're not, they're not worshiping Him. They're not praying to Him. They're not reading His Word. They don't even want to go to a life group and study the Word of God. They're too busy for everything else. They declare that Jesus is Lord, but they're just not the Lord of their lives. And so they can do whatever they want. And they, they don't realize that Jesus is coming again. And so for those of us who, who loves Him and are obeying Him and following Him, listen, this is the blessed hope that we have, that He gave that promise that He is going to come again. And friends, we are getting closer and closer to that day. As we look around us, as we look at the, the events that are happening around us today, you know, as we look at the prophecies one after the other being fulfilled, get excited because uh, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, one day you're going to see Him once again as He comes with His great power and glory. Hallelujah. Amen. So friends, um, as I close today, I want to tell you a story. Um, you know, as World War II was drawing to a close, the Allied armies gathered up many 
uh, hungry orphans. There were people that were left, you know, orphans because their parents had been killed in action. And, and they were placed in camps where they were well fed. And despite all the great care they received, they couldn't sleep at night because they were nervous and they were afraid. Finally, they came up with a solution. You know, each child was given a piece of bread to hold on in bed. And they were told not to eat it, but, uh, but only to hold on to it until the morning. And you know, an amazing thing happened. These orphans slept soundly because they knew instinctively in their mind that they would have food to eat the next day. You know, friends, the Bible says that we are also orphans because of our sins. We are away from God, and God wants us to give us the bread to hold on to. And, but there's more. Jesus is the bread of life. That we can hold on to Him. You and I must partake of Him by asking Him to come down deep down inside. You know, friends, some of us are just holding Him at an arm's length. You may even comment on how, the good, uh, how good the bread looks and how sweetly it smells. But it will do you no good unless you take Him and, and digest Him as the very food for your soul. And Jesus said, if you will eat this bread, you will live forever. And so, friends, I encourage you, it's time to believe and to receive him. And to know that Jesus is the bread of life. He is our provider. He is our protector. And he makes a promise that he will come again and that we will spend eternity with him. Amen. You received that? Why don't you declare that in your life this morning or this evening, whatever time you're in? Uh, why don't you declare that right now and say, Jesus is the bread of life. Or you can say, He is my protector. He is my provider. He is my life. Amen? Praise God. Do you receive that today? Well, we're going to pray today and thank the Lord for reminding us again of who He is in our life. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to You today. We thank You, uh, Lord, for reminding us that Jesus is the bread of life. And today, Lord, we thank You that uh, we are satisfied because of You in our life. Without You, we can do nothing. But with You, Lord, all things are possible. And I pray for every person here, O oh God, watching today, Lord, I pray that may they seek you. May they be satisfied to know that you are the one that will fill their greatest need in their life. You are their provider and you are their protector. And you make a promise that as we follow you, God, that, you, that we will be with you forever. And so, Lord, we commit uh, our lives to you now. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends. If you would like to have a deeper relationship with Christ and you would like to know how you can walk uh, and, uh, with Christ and, and know how to live a new life with Him, uh, with the fear of the Lord, let us know. Um, make a chat below, uh, type a chat and let us know that you would like to get more information or fill up a connect card so that we can respond to you. And if you don't belong to a life group, I'm always reminding you, make sure you become part of a life group where you can study the Word of God and you can also make friends, all right? And so, friends, let's just close today. Will you please stand from wherever you are today and we're going to receive the blessing of the Lord and the blessing from heaven. Receive the bread of life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine His face upon you and be gracious to you. 
May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. May he cause you to walk under an open heaven. May he cause you to prosper in every area of your life, even as your soul prospers. May he open doors of opportunities for you that you can enter in and be victorious for God. May he continue to fill you with his love, grace, and the power of his spirit throughout this week and until he comes. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great week. <coughs> Hello Champions, we are thankful that you have chosen to join us today here at Champion Life Center Church Online. We are blessed and honored that you have chosen to worship with us. We pray that you felt welcome and love and that your worship experience was one that was engaging, uplifting, and fulfilling. If you have committed your life to Christ today, please send us a note by visiting our website at championlife.ca and select contact. Send your feedback and prayer requests or call us by phone. And remember, you can give your tithes and your offering to our website, text to give, use the Champion Life Center app, or e-transfer your giving. Just make sure to select the location that you are giving to. Thank you so much for your continued support and may the Lord bless you richly. Calling all the men in the house, yes, the Men's Network Startup Meeting on March 27 at 7 to 8 p.m. via Zoom. Link to follow. Also, feel free to share this broadcast with your friends, with your loved ones, and with your family. You want more? If you want more, please hang out with us right now at our Connect Lounge right after service online. Lastly, don't forget to follow us on our social media pages. This is the best way to stay updated with everything that's going on here at Champion Life Center and to engage with our Champion Life Center family. And of course, we want to stay connected with you. Let us know how we can be praying for you as well. We are so glad that you have joined us and we hope to see you online next Sunday. Stay safe, be blessed, and continue to rejoice.